Welcome to Lyme Time. I'm Allie from the Tick Chicks. We are all more than Lyme disease and chronic illness, and together we stand with you to overcome and rise. I'll bring you closer to the experts in cutting edge treatments and even a few unexpected ways of healing. I'll ask the questions you want answers to regarding Lyme disease and successful ways of getting you closer to 100%. We are in this together and will not be defined by Lyme. Today, I am so happy to welcome Dr. Richard Horowitz. And if you're a Lyme, you may know about Dr. Horowitz and you may not know about him, but I'm gonna read his bio here and just give you a little bit more information. Dr. Richard Horowitz is a board certified internist and medical director of the Hudson Valley Healing Arts Center, an integrative medical center specializing in the treatment of Lyme and other tick-borne diseases. He has treated over 13,000 Lyme and TBD patients in the last 30 years and is one of the founding members and past president-elect of ILADS. Dr. Horowitz has published multiple peer-reviewed articles on effective diagnostic and treatment options for Lyme and co-infections and served as a member of the HHS Tick-Borne Disease Working Group in 2017 through 2018. He was also co-chair of the HHS Tick-Borne Co-Infection Subcommittee, which gave recommendations to Congress on the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of tick-borne illness. And he was recently elected to the NYS Department of Health Tick-Borne Disease Working Group in New York. For dedicating his life to helping those stricken with the devastating illness, he has been awarded the Humanitarian of the Year Award by the Turn the Corner Foundation and awards from Project Lyme. Dr. Horowitz has also published the first peer-reviewed article in the world literature on the role of glutathione deficiency in COVID-19, which I'm really excited to talk to him about. And it's now been cited over 150 times. And he's the author of two best-selling books on Lyme disease, which you can see also at thetickchicks.com, Why Can't I Get Better and How Can I Get Better? He is now releasing his first science fiction climate change novel, Starseed Revolution, The Awakening, which contains innovative scientific solutions for our climate crisis. Dr. Horowitz, welcome. Yep, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. Now, I really want to get into your latest book because it's so much fun and I, I really can't wait to talk about that. But what I'd like to do is start out by talking first and foremost about what you're known for primarily, which is Lyme disease and all things Lyme and your involvement with ILADS. Can you tell me a little bit about your background with ILADS? Sure. So um, I'm a board certified internist. And when I finished my residency down in New York City, uh, this goes back into the mid 80s, I decided to move to upstate New York in Dutchess County, about two hours north of New York City. At the time, I didn't realize I was moving into the largest Lyme endemic area in the United States. So my spiritual teachers, when I was finishing med school, I had said to them, you know, what do you want to teach me getting out of med school to be a doctor? Like, what's the most important thing you want me to know? And what they said to me was, Richard, have compassion, put yourself in people's shoes, do for them what you would want to have done. They said, and everything will go well. And, you know, interestingly enough, of course, as these patients came in with the M rashes, although, you know, 75% of them got better with 30 days of doxy or amoxicillin, 25% did not. And that started me on a journey over 30 years ago, looking for solutions for Lyme. And at this point, I've seen over 13,000 patients. I've, you know, published a lot of articles. And um, even my wife, who was sick for over 30 years, she finished the double dose Dapsone protocol, which I published a little over, I think about two years ago at this point, and she's still been well in remission. So, um, you know, it's been kind of exciting. It's been a bit detective journey, trying to figure out why people are sick. And um, the 16 point MSIDS model that's discussed in both of my books with some of the recent literature on biofilms and persisters, it's made a huge difference in helping Lyme patients to get better. I agree. I agree with that. Now, ILADS meets uh, together as a community once a year, or or how often do you get together? It, it is once a year, um, you know, and we formed the organization. This goes back to, gee, I think it was the early 90s. I met in New York City with Nick Harris, Joe Boroscano, Steve, Phyllis, uh, Steve Phillips, um, Andrea Gato. I think those are the ones of us who sat in a room and we decided to form ILADS, right? This goes back to the early 90s. 
In fact, my wife was with me at the time uh, in this very small hotel. And, you know, we didn't really think much about it. We just realized we needed to get docs together in a forum to do this. And, you know, from those humble beginnings over 20 years ago, starting the organization, I mean, now it's grown, of course, to um, hundreds of members and international conferences yearly. And, um, you know, of course, it's a great organization and we've helped the community a lot. You certainly have. And I have I have a link up on our website because people are often wanting to be in touch with an ILADS doctor. When, when somebody's first told that they have Lyme disease, they want to go they want to go the conventional route, certainly, and they want that doctor. And so I would highly recommend anybody on that path gets in touch with ILADS because they can put you in partnership with a doctor in your local area. And also um, is, is just a great resource with all, all kinds of facts on Lyme disease. Um, now let's talk a little bit about Dapsone. And I, I understand you treated with Dapsone for a period of time and then sort of unexpectedly found yourself into an unexpected position where this double dose Dapsone came into your lap. So can you tell me a little bit about that story? Sure. So, um, you know, one, one of the things about discovery in medicine is I, I can't even take credit uh, in particular for this regimen. The only credit I get is that it was almost like the universe whispered into one of my patient's ears, take a double dose of Dapsone. It'll make you feel better after you feel worse. And this guy who had been sick, he was in his 20s. He was sick for about seven or eight years, uh, unable to go to school, unable to hold a job down. And we started him on doxycycline, rifampin, and Dapsone. Um, he started getting better. And his fourth month, he accidentally took 100 milligrams twice a day, which was double the dose at the time that I was using. This probably goes back uh, probably six years ago or so. And um, so when I interviewed him the month afterwards, he, I said, listen, he came in and he said, listen, I'm feeling horrible. I'm herxing. I said, stop everything. You were taking too much. Let's see how you are. And he came back in a month and said, doc, I'm feeling great. And I went, what? And he said, yep. He said, I'm off meds and I'm feeling the best I've ever felt. And I said, all right, I don't want you going back on anything. Let's just follow you. We followed him every three months for a year and he stayed stable. He never relapsed. Now, as you know, in Lyme disease, that is kind of the holy grail you're looking for, which is put someone on a regimen who's been sick for seven or eight years. In this case, it was a four month regimen and he stayed well until he got 16 tick bites in Maine, but that's a whole nother story. Um, but I then tried it on my wife and I told my wife who had been sick for many years, who loved Dapsone, every time she went on it, she'd feel great, but every time she stopped it, she would relapse. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, listen, honey, I need you to be a medical guinea pig. This guy had an amazing result. I know you love Dapsone, let's try it. And she did it and now she's three and a half years in remission ever since she did it. Now, I will tell you, and she's written up by the way, she's one of the three patients written up in the double dose Dapsone article that you know we published in the journal Antibiotics. It was back in 2020, I think we published the article. I call her my MSIDS gal because if you wanna really see what it takes to get people better, this 16 point MSIDS map, literally my wife had every point on the MSIDS model whether it was insomnia, food allergies, leaky gut, candida, mast cell disorder, um, low adrenals, low regular hormones, um, PTSD from a dysfunctional mother, um, Babesia, Bart now it just went on and on to the point that we had to really deal with every one of these factors on the MSIDS model. And every time we did it, she would say, I feel better. So, you know, she kept getting better in stages. It was like layering an onion, right? Just kind of mm -hmm. unlayering it piece by piece. But the final thing that finally got her well, where she has not relapsed, was double dose Dapsone. And we then published a study a couple of years afterwards in, in BMC Microbiology, where we then took the regimen and looked at it in culture with Dr. Eva Shapi and researchers at the University of New Haven. And, you know, thank God, because I do things backward. Most people look in culture first and figure out if it works. I first figure out if it works clinically and then go to culture and go, I hope it shows in culture that it works. <laughs> and of course, and of course it did. And what it showed is, and this is really the interesting part is the higher the dose of these persister drugs like Dapsone that you used, the better the result against the biofilm persister forms. Now, what happened, and this goes back now, I think nine months, almost a year ago, the universe decided, oh, that wasn't enough. We now would like to throw another patient at you who took a quadruple Dapsone. Who, whose husband, going into her second month of double-dose Dapsone, she received a letter from her husband that all of a sudden he decided to divorce her. 
She was so upset she did not look at the dose of Dapsone she was taking, and she took 200 milligrams of Dapsone twice a day, starting the second month, called me on a Sunday night and said, Doc, I am so sick. I've got nausea, vomiting. And I said, what are you taking? She said, 200 of Dapsone twice a day. I went, oh my God, the universe is doing it one more time. Obviously, this is something I'm probably going to have to look at. She's now one year in remission. She never finished the second month. So I decided mm -hmm. to try pulse high-dose Dapsone seven, eight day pulses in about 40 to 45 people. I will be publishing the results later this year. What's really interesting about the results, and it's a little bit all over the map. I'm not even sure hundred percent yet what I have, but what it seems like is happening is some of these resistant patients who either did double dose Dapsone and had BART and just didn't get enough help because BART is really the major co-infection that stops the double dose Dapsone from working. If even if you have Babesia mm. and it's active by fish testing through Igenix, you can still have a 50-50 shot. You're going to go into long-term remission for a year or longer with an eight-week protocol. But if you have BART, it's not going to work as well. So a lot of these patients who had done double-dose Dapsone, who said, look, I got some temporary benefit, but it didn't hold me, they are now the patients telling me that layers of their illness are coming off. And one example is this kid who's, I think he's about 30 years old in California, He's had cognitive issues since he's 10 years old. He's about 30. After the third pulse of this, of this Dapsone, and I, I have to look at how we did it for him, but I think we might have done like four days of double dose, the usual, straight into it, and then four days of quadruple. He then let me know that his cognition had significantly improved. Eight, now this was the third pulse, but nothing for this kid had worked in the last 20 years. Wow. Other patients with resistant neuropathy, are telling me that four weeks after the protocol, layers of the illness are being removed. Now, I still have to figure out in this population because I have to, I'm going to go to on vacation. I'm finally getting a week in Florida coming up. But mid-March, when I get back, I'm going to be pulling all of these 45 patients charts, calling them up, sending them surveys. I'm going to collect the data. I will publish it. But what it looks like is happening is just like double dose steps on work better than single dose. Pulse Dapsone at a higher dose. And I'm, by the way, I'm not encouraging anyone listening on this call to do this yet because you have to deal with the side effects because the side effects of double dose Dapsone include what I call do no harm. H stands for Herxheimer reactions. A is for anemia. R is for rashes. M is for methemoglobinemia. Now the Herxes we usually control by working on three biochemical pathways. The first is NF-kappa B, which is a switch in your nucleus that turns on inflammation. How do you shut down that switch of inflammation? Because inflammation is why Lyme patients feel bad with fatigue and headaches and brain fog and pain. You shut it down with three supplements, N-acetylcysteine, NAC, at least 600 milligrams twice a day, alpha lipoic acid, 600 milligrams twice a day, and glutathione, anywhere between 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice a day. Now, these protocols, by the way, are in my books, but they're also on my website, www.cangetbetter.com. Now, you'll find the protocol is actually under the COVID-19 protocol. When you look up prevention and treatment of COVID-19, you will see the pathways that I'm talking about here. So <clears throat> don't rush to take notes and listen to this podcast over and over. You can just go on the website and find it. Nice. The second pathway is called the NRF2 pathway. So when you have inflammation, there's another pathway to lower inflammation, and there's four supplements you can use. The two main ones we use are turmeric, curcumin, at least 1,000 milligrams twice a day, and broccoli seed extract, sulforaphane glucosinolate. The one I use is from Zymogen. It's called Oncoplex ES. It's 100 milligrams twice a day. So that lowers inflammation through a separate pathway. And the beauty about the broccoli seed extract is it's the most potent herb to open up your phase two liver detox pathways. So as you're trying to get rid of mold and environmental toxins and all these cytokines and inflammatory molecules from the Lyme, it does a great job of opening up the detox pathways. Um, you still have to drink fluids and flush through the kidneys and people love doing saunas and sweating the toxins out through the skin and you know make sure the bowels are moving. I mean, you still got to work all the pathways, but it's very useful. And the third is a pathway called the NLRP3 inflammasome pathway, and the interesting supplement that lowers this, which by the way, it's another, these are all pathways, by the way, in COVID-19, that's how I knew to publish the glutathione article, um, is melatonin. One milligram of melatonin at bedtime, even if you don't have sleep problems, which most Lyme patients do, 
they can't fall asleep, they keep waking up in the middle of the night, one milligram will help. Mm -hmm. Yes, you and pretty much just about everybody who comes to see me, um, one milligram of melatonin will help shut that down. So if you work these three pathways, that's H, do no harm, Herx's. A, anemia. If you give enough folic acid, leucovorin, L-methylfolate, with dapsone, you can pretty much hold the anemia to a three gram, four gram drop. And once you stop dapsone, it reverses within eight weeks. So it's really not that big a deal, but you have to be sure as a woman, you don't have heavy periods, you're not iron deficient, so you don't have, or you're B12 deficient, folic acid, so you don't have multiple forms of anemia overlapping, but that's kind of easy to handle. Rashes, if you happen to be someone who is a patient who's allergic to Bactrim, sulfur drugs, the good news about Dapsone is that even though it's a sulfur drug, only about one in a hundred people actually get a rash. And even mm -hmm. if you do, it's generally controlled with an H1, H2 blocker like taking Zyrtec and Pepsid, Cetirizine and Famotidine. But the final one, do no harm, H-A-R-M, methemoglobin, this is where you don't carry oxygen in the blood as efficiently. The way you reverse that one is using high dose glutathione, could be 2000 milligrams twice a day with an oral supplement called methylene blue, which you get from compounding pharmacies like Infuserve in Florida, 50 milligrams twice a day with high dose glutathione will generally keep your methemoglobin levels in beautiful range. So all of the Lyme patients that have said, oh my God, we're worried about taking Dapsone. You don't understand. You should be worried about having chronic Lyme disease and having this bug stay in your body. If I had chronic Lyme, this would be one of the first things that I would be doing for myself is taking double dose Dapsone. Now, it's not that it's an easy protocol, a lot of ups and downs, but you know, if you don't have BART, this is the first eight week published protocol that you're gonna go into long-term remission over a year or longer just by doing an eight week protocol as long as all of the 16 points on the MSIDS map are dealt with. And the most important ones for those listening who are Lymeys is that you have to look at all the sources of inflammation because we talked about in Lyme that it's inflammation um, the switches that turn on, TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, um, IL-10, IL-18, these inflammatory molecules is why you feel horrible. It's why you feel horrible in COVID and BART and all of these. So you have to keep in mind that inflammation can come from multiple sources. Now, most of my patients are co-infected. So if you're not dealing with Babesia, if you have day sweats, night sweats, chills, air hunger, I can't catch my breath or a cough you can't explain, um, and, and you've ruled out asthma, GERD, post-nasal drip, which are like 99% of all reasons you have a cough, well, then it, it's probably going to be Babesia and it needs to be treated. BART's a little bit trickier because there are over 36 different subspecies of BART, and you've got to use labs like Igenix Bartonella fish, uh, T-Labs will do a Bartonella fish, um, you can get Galaxy Labs to do a multiplex PCR panel for other species like Bartonella Elizabethae, Bartonella vinsoni subspecies. So you've got to go after the co-infections, especially Babesia Bart. That's like of top importance if you're a Lyme patient not getting better. But the second part is you got to look at your gut because most of my patients have leaky gut and food allergies. Those cause the same inflammatory molecules as Lyme. Some of them have mast cell activation from Lyme or mold, it's called PIMCAS, pathogen-induced mast cell activation. So you gotta make sure you're dealing with mast cell and, and controlling it. You're dealing with leaky gut, you're looking at multiple food allergy panels using IgG4 food allergy panel. And then you gotta make sure you're getting them to sleep because if you're not sleeping, the inflammation doesn't shut off. And if you've got too many environmental toxins like mold and heavy metals, the, the inflammation will not shut off. If you're mineral deficient, in magnesium, copper, and zinc, your inflammation is not going to shut off. So it's like having multiple rivers of inflammation going into an ocean of inflammation. And all of this inflammation has downstream effects. So what are the downstream effects? Your mitochondria, the powerhouse of your body, it basically will get damaged because there's nothing to protect it. What happens with mitochondrial dysfunction? You're chronically fatigued right? Your brain is not going to work. You get nerve pain with neuropathy. You get POTS dysautonomia, low blood pressure, uh, where you stand up and you feel like you're going to pass out and you get dizzy, palpitations, anxiety, fatigue, brain fog. Those are all symptoms of POTS, right? Um, and the hormones get thrown off. All of the inflammation will affect your adrenals. It'll affect your sex hormones. 
So anyone out there listening, you have to work with your doctor and especially a doctor who understands integrative medicine and has been trained by ILAD standards. You have to go through every point on the 16 point message map because otherwise it's like going into a doctor's office with 16 nails in your foot saying you have foot pain and the doctor is gonna pull out a nail and say, come back in a month and you're gonna come back with foot pain because you haven't gotten all the nails. So please don't worry about double dose Dapsone, right? It, it really does work, but you've got to make sure you've been doing fish testing and figuring out if you have active BART, active Babesia. Um, and I will be again publishing the results of this new study. And my goal will be to find even shorter term therapies, high dose pulse therapy, like they might do for chemotherapy for cancer, where you're not going to be a Lyme patient on antibiotics for the rest of your life. We're going to figure out combos with these persister drugs. And right now we've only got two, Dapsone, which I figured out from John Hopkins researchers saying Lyme is a persister bacteria, which we knew it persisted, but I didn't think of it like tuberculosis or leprosy. Hmm. So, you know, where did I come up with this protocol? Well, rifampin and dapsone is used to treat leprosy. They give it for a year to cure leprosy. All I did was say, hey, let me look at these drugs that are used for persisters. Dapsone has great penetration into the central nervous system. I do not have to use IV drugs anymore. No more IV recephin ever since I've gotten Dapsone on board. So great penetration into the brain. It is anti-inflammatory. It hits Babesia. It has anti-malarial effects. And the fourth reason it is so great is it hits persisters and biofilm forms. The only other drug that is helpful was discovered by Stanford University, which is disulfiram. Now we're waiting on azlocillin a drug that was discovered by Dr. Podaniti from Stanford, it should be coming out at some point, that has potential as a persister drug, and hygromycin A, which is coming out of Kim Lewis's lab. But right now, all we've got, folks, is Dapsone and Disulfiram. And I've mixed them, by the way, together, mm -hmm. but I've had some really great results so that I don't have to worry about tox toxicity of Disulfiram because I use lower doses of Disulfiram mixed with Dapsone to get an even better effect. So, you know, for those of you listening, have hope. We're working on these protocols. We're definitely kind of tweaking them and figuring them out all the time. You definitely have had hope because every year I, I feel like I'm figuring out another piece to the puzzle. Well, you're certainly, you are leading the charge in so many ways and you've been around the block for so many years and being one of the original um, sort of spearheading doctors in this area. And we, we owe you a lot of thanks. Um, if somebody came to you and you put them on some of these pathways, according obviously to their blood, what their blood is telling you, what's the range that people are actually on these protocols uh, in terms of time? You know, is it a year? Is it two years? Is what do you? Well, find? no. I mean, if if they don't have active BART, it's eight weeks. <laughs> That's the oh. beauty. Wow. It's eight, it's eight weeks. Now, again, it's got a 50% success rate. Um, we only had about, I think it was eight patients who had PTLDS, um, you know, chronic Lyme, post-treatment Lyme syndrome, but that group is 57% success rate. And we published the first article in the peer review literature that actually showed that these patients who are diagnosed with PTLDS, which like, well, what is PTLDS? It's like, well, of course it's a chronic persistent Lyme patient. Oh my God. It's like, wake up folks, look at the literature. Of course, Lyme persists. Yes, there are peptidoglycans. You may have pieces of the organism that stays in the body. You get autoimmunity, but that doesn't mean that these persisters and biofilm forms are not playing a big role. Now, if you have BART, we do it a little differently. We usually will do like, you know, BART is much more difficult. I need at least four intracellular drugs like a tetracycline, rifampin, a macrolide, pyrazinamide. We might need that for a few months okay. with Dapsone, maybe even with disulfiram and methylene blue because disulfiram methylene blue was published by John Hopkins research to hit BART persisters. And we only learned a couple of years ago that Bartonella had persister biofilm forms like Lyme. So what we do is we will use a few months of those protocols, still going to the double dose Dapsone um, and finding that if we use more intracellular drugs, um, and, and I've cured BART, but the problem is unfortunately, gentamicin has been part of the protocols that has cured BART and I will not use it because of the potential toxicity of the drug. So we need to come up with some better regimens for Bartonella. And I would encourage the Lyme groups to give money to these university-based researchers to really work on Bartonella, the subspecies, different combos of antibiotics and essential oils. Um, and then, you know, let's move it into clinical studies. 
So without Bartonella, you are finding about a 50% rate of success. And with an eight with, week protocol. With an eight week protocol. As long as Amazing. every, as long as every part of the MSIDS model has been addressed. Now, again, if you have low adrenal function and you try doing this protocol, you're not going to see the same result, right? So you have to understand that what it's dependent upon going through every point on the 16 point MSIDS map, which, you know, the, my last book, How Can I Get Better? Um, that's the one I would probably advise because it does talk about Dapsone. But when I wrote the book, um, it was a national bestseller back in 2017. I didn't know about double dose Dapsone at the time when I published the book. Mm -hmm. If you go online now, you can actually read all the articles on double dose Dapsone. But, but yes, I mean, it's an eight week protocol, but you've got to make sure you're working with your doctor that you don't have leaky gut, you don't have mast cell, you don't have food allergies, you're getting to sleep, your hormones have been balanced, you're looking at mitochondrial dysfunction, your POTS has been controlled. You've got to look at all of those factors. It's really truthfully not that complicated. It's a checklist. You just go down the checklist piece by piece. That's all you have to do. I hope everybody out there understands it's, it is a checklist if you don't have Bartonella. And also your doctor really, really, really needs to be line literate at the end of the day. I mean, this sort of just going on doxy for two weeks is, is so antiquated. I can't believe the, I mean, I guess, would you say that some people are actually treated that way and have- Well, well they are, but you know, usually these are people who are not aware that Lyme has biofilm and persister forms, or they might have read it, but they don't know the clinical significance. Um, you know, I do a doctor training, by the way, every year. We're probably going to do this one at the end of May. And I've trained over 200 doctors in the MSIDS model. And we get somewhere between 40 to 80 doctors every year. And we've been doing it by Zoom the last couple of years. Um, but if they check in also with my office, okay. Um, my, my office email is um, medical at H V H. AC.com. It stands for Hudson Valley Healing Arts Center. Um, medical at HVHAC.com. Um, Heather, who's there, if you're living in another state, um, she can sometimes even guide you to one of the doctors who's trained with me, who's mm -hmm. in your state, um, and, and refer directly to them because, you know, it, it's a, now that, you know, we're getting over COVID and the pandemic is kind of calming down people do need to come in. I can't just do telemedicine the way we used to. So, you know, we can also help out if you can find through the ILAD site or LDA.org site, um, you can check with our office and find out, you know, hey, did doc train one of the people in Ohio and Florida? And, and odds are we probably trained somebody in your area that also we may be able to refer you to. Great. And I think it's kind of interesting to note that Lyme is a bacterial infection and COVID is a viral infection, yet we're dealing with a lot of the same symptoms. And in your case, you're saying you're going to have a lot of the same treatments in that well, long yeah. hauler. And the, and the reason it's the same, by the way, is because of what I call the three eyes, infection, inflammation, and immune dysfunction. I've been talking about the three eyes for Lyme for over 20 years. It's the same thing at COVID-19. And the problem with the long haulers is that they have exactly the same symptoms of chronic Lyme, yeah. but but there is one big difference. Both groups get chronic fatigue, musculoskeletal pain, nerve pain like neuropathy, brain fog, headaches, neuropsychiatric anxiety, depression, um, insomnia. You actually POTS, dysautonomia, they overlap, the difference. Mm. If you got Delta early on, you're gonna lose your sense of smell or taste. That you don't get with Lyme. That's more like Alzheimer's um, and neurodegenerative diseases in the past. But with Lyme, the symptoms tend to come and go with good and bad days where the pain migrates. So if you have pain that is migrating around your body, joint pain, one day it's in your shoulder, two days later it's in your knee or muscle pain, right? Or nerve pain, tingling, numbness, burning, stabbing. If that moves around, Lyme is the only disease on the face of the planet that causes migratory nerve pain. There is no other disease that causes this. So if you've got migratory pain, that doesn't mean, by the way, you can't be a long hauler and still have Lyme. You know, you could be a Lyme patient and get COVID-19. But I will tell you that the 125 patients in my practice with Lyme who got COVID, they've not become long haulers. The regimen that is on my website, cangetbetter.com, um, when we gave them 14 days of ivermectin at 0.2 milligrams per kilo once a day, 
with high dose glutathione, 2000 milligrams, two or three times per day, NAC, alpha lipoic acid, curcumin, melatonin, broccoli seed extract, right? Everything I talked about, zinc, vitamin D, um, these people basically stayed well. And by the way, not one of my patients died in the entire pandemic and only two patients went into the hospital in two years. One of them was immune deficient. The other was a 75 year old woman who had been vaccinated um, and just had other immune issues and was actually on a vent, but fortunately survived. So, you know, I think this protocol basically helped the Lyme community. We may be ahead of the game. Everybody who's in this, in this community together is actually staying on top of their, their prevention game. And that's a big deal. So now let's focus our attention in a different way. Um, I want to talk to you about your new book, your, your exciting sci-fi adventure. And it's sort of an out of this world novel, but it's, it's, it's actually dealing with very real world problems that we have going on right now. And uh, I'm going to let you take it away and sort of give us a basic over, overview of this book. So, you know, just like with the double dose Zapstone, I followed the leads, you know, kind of like the universe was whispering in my ear, like, look at this, because someone got better. About four years ago, the universe was whispering in my ear again, when kids were coming in after double dose Zapstone, getting better. And I would say to them, so what are you planning on doing with your life? You're going to school, you're going to college, you're going to get a job. They said, no. I said, why not? They said, well, the world's going to end. Why should I bother getting a job or going to school? And this started happening literally week after week. Like you, you probably know if you have synchronicities that keep happening over and over and over, the universe is knocking on your door trying to give you a message. So when this was happening back in 2018, and this was a time when our, president, our administration at the time was denying that climate change was an issue, um, I decided to see what these kids were actually fearing, what they were experiencing and what they were worrying about. So I took a deep dive into the climate literature and I realized, oh my God, they were right. We, are, we were in big trouble. Um, so I went into meditation. I've been meditating now for over 40 years. Um, and, I, and I spoke to my spiritual family in meditation. And I said, listen, what do you want me to do to help these kids with climate grief? How can I help the world? Because obviously we're, we're dealing with what looked like, and it is, the greatest existential threat that humanity has ever faced. I want to be clear, this is not a small issue that we're dealing with here, okay? But the, the, the purpose of the book is not to scare people. It's actually to give them humor in describing the problems and the solutions. And I did find solutions. So what I heard in meditation was write a book. And when I responded to my spiritual family, like, why would anybody want to read a climate book by a Lyme doctor? I heard, oh, no, 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 not any type of book. We want you to write a science fiction climate change book, to which I responded, you want me to do what? And they said, oh, yes, and we'd like you to make it funny, to which I responded, just so I can be clear about my marching orders here, because, you know, sometimes we're not always so clear what we hear in meditation. You want me to write a humorous science fiction climate change book to give hope to these kids with climate grief, to outline the problems with the climate and actually show people that there are solutions that we can have hope, but do it in a way that it's going to capture the imagination of people and have them laugh. And by the way, poke fun about some of our government institutions and how they've handled Lyme disease. There are jokes in this book, by the way, that only the Lyme community <laughs> is going to get. And I promise you, and you, you know, because you've, you've, you've seen the book already. It's like, there's a lot of laughs in this book about this. Like, and me, you know, humor is medicine, right? We need our endorphins to flow. We've gotten over two and a half years of COVID, right? We've got all these issues now with what's going on with Russia and, and inflation. It's like, we need a laugh, but we also need to know that there is hope for what's going on. So I basically sat down in meditation and for six months downloaded a 450 page manuscript. Now I had never done anything like this before. It was literally like in meditation, looking at a blank movie screen, looking at images and listening carefully for like dialogue, names of characters. And little by little, this whole thing downloaded. I'd never had an experience like this. And by the time it was done, and my wife was downstairs while I was writing upstairs, she would hear me hysterically laughing as I was downloading the material. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not sure who is on my kind of intuitive meditation line, but it felt something like the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas with Mel Brooks and Groucho Marx were on the line at the same time because it, it, was, it was like 
oh my God, you're giving me science, spiritual advice and humor at the same time. And it was literally, it was hysterical. I really enjoyed writing it. But since I'd never written a novel, I hired out of my own pocket, um, an English professor, Jeffrey Girard, he's in Ohio. Um, he edited the first version. He read my first draft and said, I love it. Let me help you with it. I then got it to a second editor, Steve Saffel, who's the head of a science fiction uh, firm, mm -hmm. Titan Books. Steve read it, said, Rich, I love it. I want to give it a shot for the second edit. And then Permuted Press did the third. And it's live on March 1st. It's live this coming Monday at this point. Um, and I will tell you, I and mean, I think the Lime community is really going to enjoy it, but the, the, the whole part of the book that people need to get, and tonight I'm going to be doing a two-hour webinar on the climate, on health effects. What people need to know is they really need to educate themselves on the climate. You need to understand what the problems are. There are basic problems with the biodiversity of this planet going down. We're losing 150 species a day. And the WHO and other organizations are stating by the year 2050, 25 to 33% of the species on this planet will be extinct. They are calling this the early stages of the human sixth extinction. Now, I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm telling you this because this is a scientific fact and reality. There's enough on this. And if you come to the webinar tonight, you're going to see the facts on this. So are there solutions to it? There absolutely are. We need to save 50% of the planet to keep biodiversity because the pollinators are going down. The second problem is they're dumping all these environmental toxins that you know as a Lyme patient are getting into you and they're actually making your Lyme disease worse. Mm. Um, the third part of it is with the global greenhouse glasses, gases, the, the permafrost in the Arctic, the Arctic is two to five times warmer than North America. So whereas we've only seen a 1.1 centigrade rise above pre-industrial levels here in America, the Arctic is two to five times warmer and it's causing the permafrost, which is no longer permanently frozen, to release methane, which is 30 to 80 times warming, more warming than carbon dioxide, with nitric oxide, which has a warming effect up to 300 times, and there's a big glacier by the name of the Thwaites Glacier in West mm -hmm. Antarctica. They just reported last month by the American Geophysical Union that in three to five years, this glacier may collapse, crack off and collapse in the ocean. It's expected to raise global sea levels by over two feet. Now, this is not let's become carbon neutral by the age 2050. This right. is in three to five years. Now, these are estimates, but understand this is coming at us a lot faster and I don't know how much it would be to cost to, for New York City to be underwater, for Miami to be underwater, for coastal cities, but this is coming sooner than expected. And I have solutions in the book for geoengineering that come from Harvard University, that come from Stanford, as far as getting 139 countries to wind, water, solar, WWS, how do we do it? Stanford has already laid out the map. So tonight at this webinar, I'm gonna point out the climate is raising tick-borne diseases. As the environment warms, these insects, their body temperature directly and the rate of reproduction rises as the temperature rises. So just as the CDC told us last year, there was about a half a million cases of Lyme, more than we've ever seen. It is only going to get worse as we see the warming planet. So the toxins are getting worse because they're also being released. We just got over COVID-19. You may not know that there are viruses, bacteria, and fungus that are in the permafrost that are being shown that they're going to be released as it melts, creating new pandemics. And humanity has no immunity against these viruses, bacteria, and fungi. So humanity is in big trouble. So that's the bad news. But the good news is I spent years researching this to figure out can I give these kids with climate grief hope? And the answer is yes, but we need to institute these solutions right now. And what I'm asking the Lyme community to do is pre-order the book or get it when it comes out on March 1st. Get me a voice in the climate dialogue. Right now, I don't think people understand how bad Lyme and tick-borne is going to get. I'm going to talk about Lyme. I'm going to be your ambassador talking about Lyme and tick-borne. I'm going to be your ambassador talking about toxins but I'm also gonna be your ambassador talking about solutions that are not being discussed on a regular basis. Like how do we cool down that Thwaites Glacier so it doesn't fall into the ocean in the next three to five years? Everyone is 
if you read the mainstream media, it's like it's a done deal. Like mm -hmm. this is just going to happen. The wildfires are going to get worse. The tornadoes, the hurricanes, the mold infested buildings, um, the increase in vector borne diseases, um, the, the loss of pollinators, they're making believe like it's a done deal and there's nothing we can do. And that is not true. This it's almost like humanity being lemmings, throwing themselves off of a bridge and a cliff, killing themselves. And we all need to stand up and we need to fight for the future of this world, for the future of our children, of our children's children. And I promise you there are solutions, but this is where the Lyme community come together for the first time in a way that they have never come together and say, we can make a difference in this world, but please allow me to be your ambassador and let me do this for you because I've spent years researching this. And you know, you'll see when, when the book comes out, why I'm suggesting you read this, both to understand the problems and solutions, but also because everybody needs a good laugh at this point. And you'll see with the Lyme jokes, you'll, you'll really will have a good <laughs> laugh and, and learn about the climate and solutions. But we all have to be prepared for what's coming. We can't stick our heads in the sand like ostriches and say, it's too much, it's overwhelming. It's like, no. And we as a Lyme community can come together and lead the charge here, but I need to motivate the community to do this. Right. So so now it's it's our time to come to the forefront and help humanity with other problems, not just Lyme disease. Well, I'm certainly very thankful to your spiritual guides that must have been laughing their butts off just watching you write this and hearing all the and, and, and channeling all the great jokes in there and, and really bringing it down. I mean, the book actually grabs you from the beginning and it does because it's just almost satirical it's just a it's it's a bird's eye view of what maybe somebody in outer space would actually observe about our planet where if they were just plopped down and had the intelligence to look at the most recent history and also history before that but um just sort of it's just it just takes a global approach to a very common problem that we don't all see because we're too busy with the minutia every day of 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 our our small worlds and not really understanding the planetary um, trouble that we're in, but it's just done in such a great way. And I don't know how you got all the the names in the. <laughs> well, so, so so you know, like like everything, things come. So when it's when the book title is Starseed Revolution, you'll notice it's R slash Evolution. Huh? So obviously, the double entendre of that is that. There's a revolution that's needed to save the planet, but there's also an evolution because there's a lot of spiritual instructions in this book. These are ones that I got from enlightened Tibetan lamas who I've studied with for 40 years. And part of the thing is when I was kind of thinking about this book and what I want to put in it to give kids hope and to teach them, there were teachings that were given in Tibet about a hundred years ago by a lama, Kempo Gangshar. And these were instructions on the nature of mind of actually how to awaken, how to reach your enlightened potential. They're in the book. And I was one of a hundred people, my wife was with me. We were in Maine for 10 years receiving these teachings directly from Trunga Rinpoche, who was in Tibet in the 1950s when Kempo Gangshar was giving the teaching. So we got this direct transmission and I'm just passing it on to people. And Master Dorje, who is, as you know, the spiritual master I talk about in the book who comes from Arcturus. And you know, in the book, this is like my spiritual autobiography. I'm half human, half Arcturian. I've been genetically modified so I could fit in with the human race, right? And I and I will tell you, since I'm young, I never felt like I fit in. So this is all. This is the joke. Is when you read about my mother and grandmother in this book, I'm basically making fun of my family. This is my spiritual autobiography. My grandmother had no filter between her brain and her mouth, and it was like so funny growing up, which is why some of these characters got the way they were in the book. So you know, because oh, you read it, and it is a joy to read, and and actually makes. I, I think it's good for all ages because it actually it makes the very very important topic very easy to to digest and a fun way to actually see how we can make a difference and and that there is hope so um i want to go I, I just want to in wrapping this up i want to know if you're still in practice are you still taking patients and what's the best way for them to get in touch with you so we are taking patients so you know for me it's limited in my own practice and um 
just yesterday I, I did a podcast with someone and she forced it out of my mouth that I have a small concierge model, um, but I only take 12 to 15 patients. And the way it developed is when I was working for the HHS Tickborne Working Group back in 2017, 18, I was giving the federal government 40 hours of free time per week. I mean, there was no way I could support my practice. So I spoke to a friend of mine um, and she had suggested just opening up a small concierge model for people that could afford it. So, you know, it's only for people with the finances. It's like it's covered for a year. I, I have not advertised it because honestly, I didn't want people to know about it. But if you have the finances, you can do it. But you probably know at this stage in the game, I don't need to do anything for money. I could retire at this point. I'm only staying in practice to help the Lyme community. Um, but John Fallon, my nurse practitioner, does take regular patients. And I do see them. So if you come in for a visit, I stop in there. We oversee the patients. So yes, we're taking patients, but you know it's limited. We only have so many slots. But the answer is, is as people get better from double dose Dapsone and they kind of like move out, you know, my goal in my practice is to get you better and go home and live your life, right? I'm not the kind of doctor who's looking to keep you in my practice. It's like, <laughs> move on, have a life, next, right? right? So that's really the goal. So yes, um, you if you contact our office, um, we have waiting lists, but you know, we'll, we'll find you slots. If, if you're patient enough, we can find slots. Well, maybe with a double, with an eight week protocol that will help you keep things moving and help other people get in there faster because they're not in there. You're not overwhelmed with, with people that are in there for two years. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to highlight the double dose apps. And I, I think the Lyme community, sometimes they almost have difficulty believing it. Like, come on, this has got to be too good to be true. And it's like, well, that's kind of why I published it in the medical literature and why I keep telling you about it. It's like, don't tell me there's no answers for chronic Lyme. There are. I've already published it and I'm telling you it's there. It's not a full solution. Mm -hmm. You've got to do all 16 points of the MSIDs and it doesn't work as well with BART one number one, Babesia number two, but it's a good protocol for a lot of people out there, you know, <laughs> who don't have Bartonella um, or who you can adjust the Bartonella protocols to knock it down and then do it. So it, again, it gives hope, just like this book, Starseed Revolution, was to give hope for the, the kids with climate grief. The whole point of what I do in life is to give people hope and say, listen, you don't have to live with this for the rest of your life. That thank God for these university-based researchers who, you know, gave me the idea of using persister drugs like Dapsone, you know, there is hope for you. But you've got to speak to your doctor about it. And I, by the way, and I speak to doctors all the time, even if you don't want to come to our practice. I spoke to someone yesterday. It's like, can you just explain the double dose a little bit to me, you know, and I'll get on the phone with a doc for 10 minutes and reassure them and hold their hand and right. So just know, you don't even have to come to me, you know, to do this. I can try and help your doctor if they want, but I would suggest then if your doctor is going to do it, take the, the medical training that I do at mm -hmm. the end of May, it's a, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's like 15 hours of teaching. Um, and it's, it's really the way to get the full download of all the updates on Lyme and co-infections and the MSIDS model. Um, and any health care practitioner that wants to learn can just, again, contact our office at medical at hvhac.com. I think that's great. If you already have a doc that you're really happy with and they want to learn just that little bit more, everybody send your docs there because that would be great to get this yeah. latest information. Right. Dr. Hart. And, and by the way, just one other thing, and the website for the new book is www.starseed, one word, S-T-A-R-S-E-E-D, dash revolution. So starseed-revolution.com. And again, if you need some laughs, go on the video section and watch me play Prince Ian of Arcturus. Um, oh. and, and also you'll see all the science on Lyme disease. You'll see blogs on the climate with solutions. Um, we've got TikTok videos. I put out 60 TikTok videos for the young generation, again, to give them hope and teach them. This is a lot on the website. I've spent a lot of time getting this website in order. So I would just advise people to take a look and please share it because this is something that's affecting everyone on the planet. I mean, everyone needs to come together, be educated, but also know you can have hope. There are solutions, but we've got to call our congressmen and senators, local, state, federal. You got to tell them really, to get moving on this, that you know, we've got to get the Build Back Better Act. We've got to get resiliency for America and for the world. Um, so please, I would just encourage you, this is a great time for the Lyme community to come together and to help the world in an even greater way, right, than anyone might have imagined. Thank you. From, from your words out to the universe, uh, maybe it'll come full circle. And I certainly welcome everyone to pre-order the book and to hand them out. 
I mean, why not give them out as gifts and give them out to your kids. And I think it's great. It's a great one to have in your library for sure. And, and if anyone wants a signed copy, you just have to send to my office proof of purchase from Amazon and, your, and a self-addressed stamped envelope. And I will put a book plate in the mail. I will sign it to you, put the book plate in the mail, and you can just stick it in the front of the book. Excellent. Thank you. We've gotten all kinds of gifts today tuning in. There we go. You. <laughs> Is there anything else uh, you'd like to say or any other um, places where they can hear about you? Anything else you want to say? No, I mean, I think between the two websites of cangetbetter.com and starseed-revolution.com, there's a lot of information on both of those sites. And again, I mean, for those, I think most people know the MSIDS model at this point, but if you are a Lyme patient suffering and you don't know about this model, you really should get the last book, How Can I Get Better? It's something like 12 or 13 books on Amazon. Um, and it's it's really worth the read and give it to your, buy, a, buy one for your doctor. And, and give it to them. And it, it's one of the greatest gifts you'll ever give your physician because it teaches them functional integrative medicine, how to kind of do this. Um, and it, I think it's just a great resource so that you can work together with your doctor. It's, an, it's a multi-angled approach. And I love it because it is integrative and it, it involves certain kinds of minerals, herbs, plus the conventional medicine. And, and that's why I love it so much. And maybe you'll do an addendum to that book and add in your double dap sound as soon as you. Most, yeah. most likely I'll probably, <laughs> well, the first, the next publication is going to be this summer on, um, on the quadruple dose dap sound pulse. Okay. Um, once I understand what I have, the reason I'm not encouraging anyone to do this yet is you have to deal with the side effects of the protocol, which is yeah. kind of like cancer chemotherapy. It's not easy. Yeah. But months later, once I now collect the data, I will see if it's worth it. And I'm certainly getting clues that just like the higher dose dapsone double dose work better than the lower dose, it does look like this pulse higher dose does work for a certain subset. I just have to figure out what I'm dealing with. And then, you know, the next step for the Lyme docs is we need to do a randomized controlled trial. So I, we can finally publish this in the medical literature and convince people, the IDSA and all these other people that in fact, look, this works, right? So the Lyme community needs to come together and we need to get randomized trials done right on this because that's the only way by the way the government the idea say it's the only way you can convince them is doing it with a good randomized control study well it takes a very special doctor like yourself to really put yourself out there and to keep going after all these years fighting for all of us and we greatly appreciate it we greatly appreciate your time today we hope you'll come back in the future and uh and thank you so much for right. for this beautiful interview it's my pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much and, and blessings to everyone out there. Thank you.